Hi guys. <laughs> oh well, you knew it had to happen sooner or later. So life in the wet bulb of San Ignacio Belize down here in the middle of the second collapse of civilization has finally overtaken your old uh, your old doomer and uh, <laughs> this is me responding to living in wet bulb kissing goodbye the uh, whatever you called that so I hope you like the new look so all you Doomer chicks uh, waiting for me to clean up, this is what uh, Sam Mitchell looks like cleaned up. So anyway, it is a sweltering, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, it is a sweltering but otherwise beautiful day here in the collapse of civilization on this uh, Thursday morning, February 16th, 2013. I just did a video on uh, on Air India just ordered almost 500, 500 new uh, jet airliners, you know, fossil fuel burning jet airliners, the biggest order of new airplanes in the history of humanity as uh, everyone from Joe Biden to uh, President Macaroni to Narendra Modi cheering on the historic agreement to destroy a planet, but uh, as long as I'm here, I'm waiting to go get my teeth cleaned. Uh, you, you guys, since I've been kind of remiss in my ramps, you get a, a twofer today. Uh, you know, I just did my latest uh, video from this fellow named Steve Genco, G-E-N-C-O from uh, uh, medium.com, you know, who's done this seven-part series on the future of humanity. Good Lord, if you read that seven-part series <clears throat> from Steve Genco, uh, you will have taken your collapse for dummies 101 so uh, what Steve has done now that he's finished that monumental task he's tried to compress it he has tried to compress it uh, and even then I'm going to compress it so if you want to read that seven part series crunched into one piece I will put the link on here and you can lead and you can read the long you know cliff notes I'm gonna do the cliff notes of the cliff notes and put the link on here so you can read the expanded version take it away Steve Jenko <clears throat> 10 facts humanity must face if it wants to survive on a livable planet <clears throat> and he starts out with his great quote from Henry David Thoreau, some circumstantial evidence is very strong, like when you find a trout in the milk. <laughs> Thank you, Henry David Thoreau. So, uh, this is him uh, boiling it all down. Although anyone who knows me knows that brevity is not my strong suit, I'm going to give it a try. What we have learned is reliably true about climate change and resource depletion. We can begin by asking where the scientific consensus, you know, Colony of Cells is always talking about the scientific consensus is right now on fundamental questions about the evolving shape of our perilous future. Consensus is not unanimity, but on most questions about the future we are facing today, it is possible to assess a massive body of available evidence and pick a side 
personally, I believe our future will be determined by how well <clears throat> we accept and respond to 10 key findings in the scientific literature, findings that are so thoroughly documented and validated that I am going to suggest we call them facts. Facts. F-A-C-T-S. So now he, after stating the fact, he breaks it down, but I'm just going to stick to the, uh, you know, to the fact 1 through 10, and if you want the breakdown, uh, you can go on the link and fill in the blanks. <clears throat> fact number one. We have built a massively unsustainable, consumption-driven civilization on the backs of a uniquely powerful energy source, fossil fuels that we discovered, exploited, and will be depleted within a nano moment of planetary history less than 300 years. Fact number two. We know, we know that fossil fuels are poisoning our atmosphere, but we also know they are becoming more difficult and expensive to obtain. Within the next several decades, they will no longer be available. <clears throat> Fact number three. <clears throat> And uh, keep in mind, India just ordering 495 fossil fuel powered jet airliners. Keep that in the background. Fact number three, while we have made some, I'll keep it in the background behind all these facts. Fact number three, while we have made some significant progress in transitioning from fossil fuels to renewable energy substitutes, these gains have generally been limited to the production of electricity, which powers only about 20% of the world's energy needs. They are also occurring very unevenly across the globe. Fact number four. In order to transition the other 80% of global energy that derives from fossil fuels, including the global energy that's going to be powering these 495 new aircraft that Joe Biden uh, is celebrating. We will have to invent many new technologies that do not exist today. Hmm. And he really breaks all that down. Uh, okay. Uh, fact number five. How long and how much we continue to burn fossil fuels? Can you say 500 new jets being ordered by India Airlines? How long and how much we continue to burn fossil fuels will determine how hot the planet, you know, especially countries such as India, will get. Only when we stop burning fossil fuels will global temperatures stop increasing. Hmm. Fact number six. It is not just climate change we are facing. It is climate change plus resource depletion. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And uh, another way of saying that is this is, you know, fact six, uh, restating that. We are 
dramatically exceeding the carrying capacity of our planet. That is, we are in overshoot. That's just another way of saying fact number six. Fact number seven, our consumption of the planet's finite resources is in overshoot. We are consuming more than the planet is capable of replenishing. And I, uh, I will, uh, I am going to expand upon these. Uh, I will read out fact number seven. What are the resources we are consuming at unsustainable rates? Here is just a short list. Fossil fuels and minerals, fish and seafood, this is why I do not eat seafood, forest products, land for livestock and food production, biodiversity more generally, fresh water, food and grains, and building materials. And you know, he could go on with this list. So yes, we are not just using up all the oil, we are using up all the planet. Fact number eight. Our overconsumption of the planet's resources is very unequally distributed. The vast majority of consumption occurs in the rich global north, while much of the global south struggles to meet its most basic consumption needs of its citizens. There is simply not enough to go around. Uh, imagine that. Uh, let's see, this is, uh, that takes a long time to expand. Fact number nine. Given our failure to curb greenhouse gas emissions, such as not ordering 500 new jumbo jets for one airline, much of this, this century's warming is already baked in. Of course, uh, the apocalyptic optimist Michael Mann uh, would argue that point. Michael Mann will tell you that Steve Jenko is either mistaken or lying. Steve Jenko is claiming according to the scientific consensus, which obviously no longer includes Michael Mann, fact number nine, given our failure to curb greenhouse gas emissions, much of this century's warming is already baked in. The infrastructure poor south will suffer first and most, but its loss of productive capacity, you know, which keeps us uh, cruising along, will quickly boomerang back on the wealthy north as well. All right, coming up to fact number 10. Given facts number one to nine, some amount of energy descent from our fossil fuel peak seems inevitable. Uh, okay, those are the facts, and then I will just, uh, we will wind up those 10 facts. All right. Whether that descent will come from a voluntary decrease in resource demand, yeah, right, an involuntary decrease in resource supply, or some combination of the two remains to be seen. How steep our descent is, is likely to be is going to be determined by the answer to one question. 
how much of an alternative energy infrastructure we still manage to build out and where we will build it once fossil fuels are off the table. Ten facts lead to one dilemma. The basic dilemma these facts present us with is a two-part optimization problem. Okay, part number one, if in order to limit global warming we stop burning fossil fuels too soon, that is before we have completed our transition to alternative energy sources across all economic sectors, we risk exiting the end of oil with a significantly lower energy production capacity than we have today. Part number two, if on the other hand we burn fossil fuels for too long, can you say putting in an order in 2023 for 500 new jumbo jets for one airline, hmm, either because we take too long to complete a scalable alternative energy infrastructure or because of political resistance, can you say Joe Biden, President Macaroni, and Narendra Modi celebrating the order of 500 new jumbo jets, <clears throat> we may increase global warming to such an extent, say three to four degrees C, that we make the post-carbon world essentially unlivable for humans and most other species. This is why I say the 21st century is a good time to be a jellyfish. Okay, in the final, I'm going to skip over a couple of paragraphs. The final paragraph from Steve Jenko's <clears throat> new rant. The important point about ending fossil fuels too soon is this. Whatever alternative energy infrastructure we have in place when fossil fuels can no longer power our civilization, that will be the energy infrastructure that powers humanity for centuries to come. Whatever concentration of CO2 and other greenhouse gases we have released into the atmosphere before that moment will determine the amount of global warming our descendants will have to endure for centuries on. So apparently Steve Jenko does not believe in the giant Hoover vacuum cleaner in the sky where we can just keep on ordering uh, 500 new jumbo jets and we're going to have a, a CO2 vacuum cleaner following every airplane flying through the sky, sucking out the 23,000 tons of carbon dioxide coming out of the plane engine into a vacuum, a CO2 sucking vacuum cleaner in the sky. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap up this second chronicle of the collapse today and uh, go engage in some dental tourism down here in the global south. While I still can, I highly recommend you get down here to the global south and engage in some dental tourism while you still can. Bye guys. Uh, the Global South.